President elect CII, Director General CII, my colleagues on the dais, distinguished members of CII, ladies and gentlemen. There is so much spotlight coming onto the stage that we can hardly see the much more distinguished people sitting on the other side. First of all, let me thank CII for having invited me to their annual session of 2017. I had the privilege of attending your last annual session also. Let me begin by saying a few words on the future of globalization which is the overall theme of this year's annual session. There is a growing, growing feeling these days, as you know, that the recent global political developments are likely to reverse the process of globalization. We are seeing that one country after another is putting visa restrictions, restrictions so that the local population benefits from the opportunities of employment. However, in my view, this need not be seen as something that is threatening the future of globalization itself. While there may be some restrictions on movement of manpower from one country to another, but the imperatives of global movement of goods and services will remain. Just as within any country, everything cannot be produced in one region and many things have to come from other regions, so at the global level, it will remain a necessity. It would be an extremely suboptimal economic state if restrictions are imposed on the movement of goods and services across countries. We did not worry too much about the visa restrictions. We will have ample opportunities here itself, thanks to people like you. What is happening is that there is a growing realization even amongst the developed countries that the employment opportunities should go to the sons of the soil. And in order to create more employment opportunities, industry should be set up within the country. However, given the fact that the demand is not likely to increase considerably in the developed countries, they have to look towards the developing countries and therefore globalization would survive. But in order that India is able to take a lead in the process of globalization, our industry would need to ensure that the quality of goods that we manufacture are not only as good as from any other country in the world, but better than that. To be able to facil facilitate this, the government is trying to create the right ecosystem and the business environment within the country. We have gone state by state, statute by statute, process by process, and set challenging goals for ourselves to simplify the business climate. The government in the past two, three years has taken innumerable steps to ease up the business climate. Let me mention a few of them here. The biggest reform perhaps is the implementation of goods and services tax, that is GST. This will not only integrate all the central and state taxes and provide a unified national market, but would also simplify the way we do business in the country. You will not have to interact with a number of agencies, but would simply have to upload data online and the rest will be done by the IT system. Since the implementation of this historic reform is going to start soon, I would request all of you to quickly familiarize yourself with the way the system is going to work. The process of starting a new business as well as closing down the business has also been considerably simplified. A single spice that is Simplified performa for incorporating company electronically has been introduced, which integrates three separate forms and will ensure that the company gets incorporated, is provided with a name and then registration. This has, this has also been integrated with PAN and TAN registration through the same form. So through a single form, all the requirements for setting up of a company are being fulfilled. Similarly, with the setting up of the insolvency and bankruptcy board, the process of exiting from any business has also been made easier. In respect of trading across borders, again, a single window interface for facilitating trade that is SWIFT has been introduced, which acts as a single window for clearance of goods at the ports by integrating all other requirements such as of FSSAI, animal quarantine, plant quarantine, 
Drug Controller, and Wildlife Control Bureau, etc. Besides this, risk-based inspection has been introduced, and emphasis is being given to direct delivery of goods from ports. These measures are already giving very good results. A number of steps have been taken to streamline the process of obtaining construction permits, requirement of NOC from civil aviation and archaeological departments have been greatly simplified and made online. In the urban local bodies, a single window clearance portal is being introduced by integrating all the departments from whom clearances are required. We are also introducing the provision of deemed approval by local bodies of building plans if the sanctions are not accorded within a specified time. The process of getting a new electricity connection has also been simplified to a great extent. Now for connections of 100 to 140 kVA, online application with no physical documents are being accepted in many states. The Government of India is working very hard towards making governance efficient, minimal, transport, transparent, responsive, participatory and accountable. We are moving very fast towards a digital architecture of governance in all fields about which I'm sure my colleague Aruna will say something. In fact, from digital governance, governance, we are moving towards mobile governance. Those days are not very far when your mobile phone will be a one-stop shop for almost everything. I have mentioned only a few of the important reforms which have been undertaken by the government. There are numerous others which have either been implemented or are in the process. Government is also giving a major push to infrastructure development, be it in the roads, railways, civil aviation, inland waterways, telecom, energy sectors, etc. The result of all these efforts are becoming visible now. But for taking all these reforms to every nook and corner of the country, very active participation of states is vital. It is a happy situation today that the states are competing hard to outdo each other Many states have also taken commendable steps, and sometimes even we learn from them. I have no doubt in my mind that, the, that with the active cooperation of the states and in equal measure of the industry, we will be able to make rapid strides towards creating the right business environment in the country so that India emerges as a leader in the process of future globalization. With these words, I once again thank the CII for having given me this opportunity to share some of my thoughts with you all. Looking forward to hearing from my colleagues as well and to your questions. Thank you very much. Jai Hind.